Okay, here we are once again in the workshop and this time what I'm going to show you is how to connect your other peripherals to your computer tower or computer flat box desktop. As you can see I have the back showing on this particular model and for those of you that can't remember what this one is or forgot what it was this is the Dell L 667R series computer and in the last video uh, I've already shown how to install the hard drive and memory into a computer system so now what I'm going to do is connect up the peripherals to check this computer out and see how well it performs the three primary connectors that you need to become familiar with are these two which is the keyboard and the mouse keyboard is purple mouse is green usually and then this connector which is the monitor connector and all these cables or all these connectors are polarized so that they only go in the connector one way. Now, if for some reason your keyboard and your mouse are not color coded like this, in other words, say they're both gray or on rare, rare, rare occasions they might be another matched color, then what you need to do is make sure that you plug the keyboard in where it says keyboard and the mouse where it says mouse and it's usually indicated on the back of the computer if it doesn't indicate and you're still confused about where to connect each device the keyboard connector is this one right here this is the one closest to the opposite side of the side that you're actually facing. This is the keyboard connector. This is the one closest to the um, edge of the uh, tower. The one inside of that is the mouse. It's always that way on, t on these towers. So the computer connector is the outside connector. The mouse is the inside connector. Just think of that if, if you're unsure. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and connect the keyboard into its respective connector. In this case, we match purple with purple. Then we take our mouse connector and we're going to connect that to the green so that matches green with green. And then we take our monitor connector, which is normally blue, and even blue on the t on the uh, computer tower itself and we simply slip it in like so and then just finger tighten the thumb screws on the connector do not over tighten those there's no reason to just finger tighten them and that will keep the cable in securely now since we have everything connected, because I'm not going to connect the sound right now, but I think I'll go ahead and connect the network cable. This is a typical network cable right here. And this is going to go down into this connector right here on an expansion card called a network card or Ethernet card. And it just simply plugs in like so. If the connectors don't go in simple and easy, that means you either have them backwards or they're not the right connection to fit in because they should go in very easily and firmly. Once they're in, they shouldn't fall out. If they do fall out, that means they weren't uh, put in securely. And it doesn't take much pressure to put in those connectors to make them secure. Do not force a connector or you could run into very 
severe problems. Now that we have all of those connections hooked up, now we can hook up the power. And this is the power cable. This is the last thing you should hook when working on a computer. So that way there's uh, no chance of any malfunctions going on. When you're working on a computer like this, even if this connector is plugged in and you're testing it for operations such as the fans running or the uh, hard drive running and the case is open, there's very, very, very low voltage. So on those peripheral devices, you will not get shocked. However, however, do not, do not, by all means, pull or disconnect anything with the computer running. That includes power supply cables going to the peripherals and the power supply cable going to the motherboard. That also includes data cables. Do not disconnect anything or connect anything with the computer in operation because you can do some you can do severe damage to the system so now I've checked everything over prior to hooking up the other connectors and I'm now ready to plug this in and like so everything is hooked we have our power mouse keyboard, monitor, and that's enough to do a basic test of the computer system. So now I'm going to swing the camera over to the monitor so we can take a good look and see what's going to happen here. Go ahead and power the tower, and it should come up within a matter of seconds, which it does. That's a good sign, and we should be getting some more activity here shortly. What the computer's doing, it's finding all the hardware that's been installed, and then it's going to perform its boot up sequence, just like so. And here it comes. This particular uh, hard drive has Windows 2000 on it and as you can see the Windows 2000 operating system is not running like it should because the hardware has been changed. The hard drive thinks that it's a totally different computer which it is but the information on the hard drive is still contained from the old computer that we couldn't fix. So what I'm going to do is clear out the hard drive using a disk manager program and then reinstall a new operating system which I think will be Millennium as I said before in a previous video because being that this is only a 667 megahertz, or actually it's 666 megahertz computer, uh, Millennium will be more than efficient to run basic programs that the client needs. So that basically ends this segment of PC repair. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you have any questions, please drop some comments, and I'll be happy to answer them for you. So until next time, have a great day, and we'll see you again soon.